Today's test is an easy one. We're going to be talking about vampire loads in the Rivian R1T and the Ford F-150 Lightning. Vampire loads are basically how much power the vehicle is consuming doing absolutely nothing. So for this test, I have charged the battery in both trucks up to 100% in the Lightning and over here in the Rivian R1T. And then I'm going to let them hang out for 10 days straight to see how much battery is left. Now, the Rivian R1T, it has a gear guard mode, which is pretty similar to Tesla's sentry mode that is disabled for the purposes of this test because the Ford F-150 Lightning, it does not have that kind of mode. Now, if you want to know how much power gear guard mode, again, the sentry mode like mode on the Rivian actually consumes, we'll test that in a separate video. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. It has now been 11 days. I accidentally overshot by one day. I have both keys here. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Flip the camera around here. Let's take a look at the Rivian first. There we go. Rivian woke up and on the inside, our range is down to 224 miles. And you can see over here, uh, if I can actually get this little warning away, 73% battery is what we have left over here in the Rivian. That could be because this vehicle doesn't go quite as deeply asleep as the Ford does, but I should say that both of these vehicles, I checked the battery level every three days using the app. So pretty equal on that front. The Ford, however, let's go ahead and see what it's done. Fortunately, it is parked right next door. So let's go ahead and see what that is looking like inside. And if I hit the power button in here, the boot up is not quite as swift as the Rivian, definitely indicative of perhaps a lower sleep state here in the Ford. And I will say that the Ford nav system is just not as responsive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instrument cluster instead. The battery it claims 100%, although I do think that the actual range estimate is a little bit lower there. But basically the Ford has lost essentially zero of its battery, still at that 100% ranking. And uh, meanwhile, over there in the Rivian, it managed to lose 27%. Now keep in mind, I did not have the gear guard feature on in the Rivian. So if the gear guard feature was on, then the power loss would be even more severe, perhaps more like we find in some Teslas because of their sentry system there. That's what Rivian calls the sentry-like system. Now over here in the Ford, as you can see again, now that it has finally booted up, but if I go over here to the charge data screen, this is agreeing with the instrument cluster, 100% state of charge, 288 miles of range. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what software version these vehicles are on. Well, as of the filming of this video, there's just one software available for the Lightning, but over here in the Rivian, there are two. This vehicle currently has 2022.27.02. I just installed this. So this was not the software version running while the test was happening because this software was not released for this vehicle just yet. But one of the improvements in this generation of software is a 15% improvement in the amount of range you lose overnight. Also, there's some air suspension improvements, some DC fast charging improvements that we're going to test a little bit later as well. And a big update to the way automatic ride height adjustment functions. Clearly that means that I need to retest the Rivian and see what kind of impact that has on its range loss. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge it all the way back up to 100%. And then I will only leave it out here for two days because I just don't wanna take another two weeks off. How does this compare against other EVs? Well, the EV6 was also hanging out during this two week time period. You can see it last updated itself on 8.2 as far as the app goes. The app says 59% battery, but the Kia has a much deeper sleep mode than the Ford. So this app will not update itself because due to the battery saving feature, you actually have to start the Kia in order to reuse the app. For some folks that could be a bit of a flaw because you can't lock or unlock the doors or start or stop charging, etc. once the vehicle has gone into this really deep sleep mode. But let's see how much battery it has left. Again, 59% as of the second, and currently it is the 15th. It's of course parked right next to the Lightning. They were all three in a little row here. So let's just hop on in, see what that battery state of charge is. According to the instrument cluster in the Kia, we have 57% of the battery. So it lost just 2% in about two weeks. Versus the Ford Lightning, it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly how these vehicles line up. The Lightning, if the battery is pretty close to 100%, it doesn't let you charge it on AC. However, over the two weeks that the Lightning was parked there, it did lose about four miles of range. Based on the average consumption in that Lightning, 
I think that it really lost about two kilowatt hours, but the truck won't let us put those two kilowatt hours back in the battery. So in reality, it's probably pretty close to the kind of loss that we found over here in the Kia. It's just that the Lightning's battery is so much bigger that maybe a 1% loss won't really show up quite the same way. Or it could be maybe half a percent or 0.8%, exactly how far Ford is rounding up to that 100% mark, we don't really know. But the Ford really has lost some battery, it's just pretty small compared to the Rivian. All right, it's now been three days since I left the Rivian alone. I decided to extend this by a day so that way we got a better picture of actual battery consumption. Now, I will say that from time to time, I was told by people walking by that they heard the fan in the Rivian running. I suspect it was cooling the battery. This week, it was a little bit warmer than last week, the two weeks during the bulk of the test, it hit a peak of 85 degrees here. So absolutely not like a Phoenix summer at all. But let's hop inside and see what we have here. Takes a while for the Rivian to respond if it's been asleep for a while. There we go. And uh, let's turn the camera around. And wow, it's lost 7% of the battery in three days. That's actually slightly more loss than I noticed before the software update. I suspect that may have something to do with the battery cooling in the vehicle. You can see right now the car thinks it's 99 degrees. I've actually checked the temperature. It is actually only 84 degrees outside right now, but obviously it's pretty hot in the car and the battery and under the hood, it could get a little bit warmer. So the Rivian is likely consuming some energy in order to keep that battery at a consistent temperature and help preserve the battery life. But you should know that over here in the Kia right next to it, it has lost 0% battery over these same three days. And the Ford F-150 Lightning parked right next to this also effectively lost zero. So definitely much greater consumption going on here in the Rivian. You might be wondering why is the power consumption so much higher in the Rivian? I suspect it's because of the way that Rivian has chosen to design the vehicle's drive electronics and just the integrated systems generally. This is a little bit more Tesla-like, and in the average Tesla, you can expect one to 2% battery loss per day, depending on exactly what features you're using. The Lightning and the EV6 and pretty much every EV outside of the Rivian and a modern Tesla and perhaps a Lucid, they're designed more like an ICE vehicle with some extra electronics electric systems on board. So the electric system seemed to turn completely off, leaving only the really low power ice derived systems that are not as heavily integrated, still active. And that certainly seems to be what's going on over there in the Kia. It will even turn off its cell modem after a while. You can't even unlock or lock the doors after a while in that vehicle. And we don't seem to have that same limitation over here in the Rivian's infotainment system. I suspect that just more of this system is running. This vehicle seems to be consuming perhaps about 90 to 100 watts all the time on average perhaps sometimes it's consuming a little bit less sometimes it might be consuming a little bit more depending on what it's doing as far as that battery temperature management goes on hopefully Rivian will be able to shed a little bit of light on this at some point I have sent an email to their PR team but I have not received a response over the last four days but there you have it. That's what Vampire Drain looks like in the Rivian and the Ford Lightning. This is a really critical thing to keep in mind if you plan on parking your vehicle for extended periods of time. Say you want to go on an international flight, you're going to be gone a couple weeks, something like that. You should know that this is going to be consuming more of its battery over that time period than some of the competition. And depending on exactly how long or how, how long you leave your vehicle or how often you charge your battery, this may end up consuming more energy, generally speaking, than something like the Lightning. If you're the kind of person that doesn't drive their car every day, maybe you drive it only two or three days a week, the rest of the time it's hanging out there idle. On average, this may end up consuming more energy over that weekly time frame than the same sort of driving situation in the Lightning. Keep that one in mind. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Find me on all those social media channels. And of course, stay tuned for more Rivian and more Lightning content coming up soon. See all of you later.